get pumped. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Monday morning, rise and shine. Here we go. My kids always hate it when I, when I say that, rise and shine. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents uh, try to get you up certain ways? Uh, my dad had a, a certain <laughs> annoyance. <laughs> he that's, that's a dad's job is to annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> He'd play the same song on oh. the way to school, and he'd put it really, really loud. And it was like a really, really, really happy song oh. on blast <laughs> for years. Yeah, you know, oh, for years. Years. <laughs> the same song again and again. Yeah. It was yeah. like it was Groundhog Day for you. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So thank you for joining us uh, on this Monday morning. We're in Genesis chapter 31. Genesis chapter 31, it's a long chapter, so we're going to get right into it. <clears throat> I'm going to read the first um, 32 verses, and then you can pick up at 33. So here we go. <clears throat> now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob, Jacob has taken all that was our father's, and from what was our father's, he has gained all this wealth. So, and Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock, where his flock was, and said to them, "I see that your father does not regard me with favor as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not permit him to harm me." If he said, the spotted shall be your wages, then all the flock bore spotted. And if he said, the stripe shall be wages, then all the flock bore stripe. Thus God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. In the breeding season of, of the flock, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream that the goats that made it with the flock were striped, spotted, or mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes and see all the goats that mate with the flock are striped, spotted, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land, and return to the land of your kindred. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there any portion of inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has indeed devoured our money. All the wealth that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. So Jacob arose and set his sons and his wives and camels. He drove away all his livestock, all his property that he gained, the livestock in his possession that he had acquired in Padam Aram, to go to the land of Canaan, to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob tricked Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he intended to flee. He fled with all that he had, and arose and crossed the Euphrates, and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. When it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled, he took his kinsmen with him and pursued him for seven days and followed close after him in the hill country of Gilead. But God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his kinsmen pitched tents in the hill country of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? that you have tricked me and driven away my daughters like captives of the sword. Why did you flee secretly and trick me and did not tell me, so that I might have sent you away with mirth and songs, with tambourine and lyre? And why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? Now you, now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. And now... You have gone away because you longed greatly for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. Anyone with whom you find your God shall not live. In the presence of our kinsmen, point out what I have that is yours and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Hmm. 
So Laban went into the into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two female servants, but he did not find them. And he went out to he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them in the camel's saddle and sat on them. Laban fell all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let not my lord be angry that I cannot rise before you, for the way of women is upon me. So he searched, searched, but did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry and berated Laban. Jacob said to Laban, What is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? For you, for you have felt through all of all my goods. What have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my kinsmen and your kinsmen, that they may decide between us two. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. What was torn by wild beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it myself. From my hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There I was by day, the heat consumed me, and the cold by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not, had not been on my side, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God saw my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you last night. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do this day for these for these my daughters, or for their children whom they born? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a, as a pillar. And Jacob said to his kinsmen, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jerah Shadusha, but Jacob called it Gilead. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he named it Gilead and Mespah. For he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are out of one another's sight. If you oppress my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no one is with us, see... God is a witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, See this heap and the pillar which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the pillar is a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and you will not pass over this heap and this pillar to me, to do harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the father, by the fear of his father Isaac. And Jacob offered a sacrifice in the hill country, and called his kinsmen to eat bread. They ate bread and spent the night in the hill country. Early in the morning Laban arose and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned home. All right, <clears throat> let's let's pray and we'll dig into it. Father, thank you for this day that you blessed us with. Thank you for your your patience with each and every one of us. We pray, Lord God, that you would teach us now from your word what it means to uh, be a family and uh, to to act as a family. Uh, we learn lessons from the negative as well as the positive. So, Lord God, teach us now from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got family feud going on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, <clears throat> there's a couple things, though, that, uh, you know, this is, this is his uncle, Uncle Laban. Uh, he says that... Uh, how many times he changed his wages? Like twenty times or something like that. He accuses him of of uh, changing the wages over and over again. Um, Jacob of his uncle Laban, and Jacob was pulling one over on 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 uh, Laban with the the sheep. Although here Jacob acknowledges it was the Lord who was actually doing it. Remember, he kind of uh, cut these branches and stripped off the bark and. It's not like he had some kind of scheme going to make the uh, the sheep speckled or not speckled or whatever it is, hmm. and um, he here he acknowledges that it was the Lord that was that was doing this, not just his his manipulation of things that was that was going on. So um, you know, and and as Laban finds out that Jacob is fleeing, Laban is really ticked off. So he gathers up. 
basically a posse, right? Mm -hmm. And pursues him. <laughs> and the and of course the posse is going to overtake him because you're traveling with women and children. So you're you're not moving at a at a quick pace. So the posse overtakes and but right before he gets to them, the Lord sends a dream to Laban and says, you know, don't, basically don't harm him. Don't say anything good or bad. Just just don't don't harm him. And so uh, the Lord spares Jacob, even in the midst of all of his scheming. And um, the twist in all this is that Rachel, the favorite, what does she do? She steals the household gods of, from Laban. So here you see, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to, how to put this. So Jacob should have been instructing his wives. Well, first of all, he should have only had one wife, but he should have been instructing his wives and his children in the ways of the Lord and not in uh, paganism, in, in, in these uh, polytheistic multiple gods and, and so forth. So um, Rachel obviously is clinging on to this. So this is going to be traveling with them now. It's already infiltrating the, the true religion, the, the true following of the one true God. Um, and she's the favorite. So, so you see how these things can start to be generational then. So you have Rachel kind of trusting in her household gods of her dad mm -hmm. instead of trusting in the Lord. And I think really this falls on Jacob because Jacob is the one who should be instructing uh, his wives into the what true worship is and who the true and the living God is and not to trust in these household gods. She takes them, hides them under herself, says she's having her period, the way of the woman, right? So mm -hmm. she says she's having her period so she can't get up, so she lies about that and then her father uh, doesn't find them. So she's her life is spared. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and then there's a big blow up at the at the at the end, towards the end, Jacob's like, you know, hey, put all anything I stole, put it out in front of him so everybody can see. You know, he's basically he's like berating him, and he's angry. He's like, you you chased me saying I took your stuff. And Laban's like, you know, the flocks, those are my flocks, the, and the, uh, the you know, the, your wives, they're really mine. Everything's mine. Your children, everything is mine. But Laban doesn't act on that he doesn't take them back because of the warning from the lord but you see where laban's heart was and the deception that's going on back and forth this is just really a dysfunctional family right <laughs> there's that i don't know you have uh, what are some things you stood out to you when you're reading through this? there's a lot of verses here there's a lot it's a long chapter yeah um i just was thinking more about the the concept of the household gods over the one true god and I was thinking about today how naturally people clump up together and, and have these clusters and, and are loyal to one another. Yeah. And so are we more like, loyal to... Like tribes. Right, right. Almost, right. Right, are we more loyal to our tribe than God? Right. Um, and that obviously a tribe could be anything. Uh, it yeah. It could be politics. It could be family. It could be um, things you like to do. I mean, it could be anything. So, yeah, yeah. it's a challenge. And I think you know, sometimes when when that loyalty uh, to the tribe instead of to God, it, it will then, our adherence to the group is more important than the truth of God's word. And so we won't say anything then. And right. when, we, when that becomes elevated, we, we just simply will remain silent while maybe somebody in the tribe, in your group, uh, is going against the will of God and you just like you know uh, it's more important that I'm a part of the group than really following the Lord and that's normal I think like yeah. I think most people are like that yeah like I, yeah yeah it, well, it's hard to go right it it means you know I'm gonna trust the Lord I'm gonna go against the grain I'm gonna go against what my friends are saying really at, at this point and that means you might lose a friendship right over that <clears throat> but it also means you might um, awaken somebody to the need for the Lord in their in their own life. Mm -hmm. uh, like the little covenant they make in um, uh, Galid uh, means heap of witness. So they, <laughs> they heap up these stones. Mm -hmm. Galid 
um, in verse 47, there was the unpronounceable, Laban called it Jeger Shahadutha, something like that. <laughs> uh, and um, Aramaic, that's Aramaic for heap of witness. And then um, uh, Jacob called it Galid, which is Hebrew for heap of witness. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah. I think the Hebrew is a little easier than the, uh, <laughs> the, the Aramaic. A little bit. <laughs> Um, anyway, it, it these covenants are made, um, and I I think here's a um, let's see. Uh, so it's verse fifty three. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and that shows that Jacob is isn't quite. Um, in tune with the Lord's will for his life and, and, and where, where the Lord stands as, as prioritized. Because remember, Jesus said, he said, uh, don't swear by anything, mm -hmm. neither in heaven, you know, that's the Lord's, or anything on earth, you know, er, that's the Lord's footstool. Everything is the Lord's. Let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. But because of all the deception, when people go down a deceptive path, they have to try and bolster their word by other things. Mm -hmm. I swear by my, my mother's great. It's basically swear by the fear of Isaac or his father, Isaac. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can't, you can't do that. I mean, obviously people aren't taking you at your word because you're not a man of your word. You're not a woman of your word. So let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. And, and then you don't have to swear by anything mm -hmm. as, as Jesus said. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another important thing in there, but mm -hmm. uh, he has a track record of not being, <laughs> That, that trustworthy hmm. in, the, in the midst of all this. Hmm. So they eventually, so they t depart and go on their way. And tomorrow we're going to see the tension against, again, arise between Jacob and his brother Esau, who Jacob deceived as well. So, so there's, mm -hmm. it, this isn't over. <laughs> the The fallout of the deceptions is, is not over. Mm -hmm. in there. Anything else yet for today? No, that's good. Yeah. So it's a big chapter. Yeah, a lot of uh, things are not not to do as a family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your interaction with your uncle, your interaction with your other things, yeah, <laughs> but not to do as a family. That's All right, right. Let's, let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, we're mindful on this day of um, the stressors on families, especially in the like the state college school district that now are back to not meeting in person. Uh, it's all online. And it's a week-to-week -week thing and how difficult that is for planning as a family. Like, what do they do? How do they handle child care? How do they handle all kinds of things and their jobs and everything else? I know there's a lot of stressors in people's lives right now. And I pray for your peace to be with them. We also pray, Lord God, for those who are making the decisions. And I'm sure they take a beating for these decisions that they make. And I ask, Lord God, that we as Christians would be as supportive as possible uh, and as uh, gracious as possible in the midst of everything that's going on because none of us knows uh, fully what to do uh, in, in this pandemic situation. So I ask, Lord God, that you would give wisdom and discernment to those making the decisions and that Christians especially would be gracious and long-suffering in the midst of this. Help us, Lord God, to be a blessing to this community. Uh, be with the university. May they make wise decisions as well. With the students, faculty, staff, keep them in your care. We lift all these things before you, entrusting everything to the nail-scarred hands of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 Have a great day, everyone. God bless you.